2019 was an amazing year here at VinWiki. Obviously, we passed a million subscribers right at the end of the year, which was just an unimaginable thing. We can't thank you all enough for liking the videos, subscribing, sharing them, coming by to tell stories, and everything that you've done to be a part of the VinWiki family. In fact, last year we gained 421,000 new subscribers to the channel. There's no words to express our gratitude and how humbling it is to be able to have this platform to come on and share our best car stories. We had over 18 million hours of watch time. So that's like 2,077 years, which I just, I, I don't even know how to understand what that means, but it's it's amazing to watch the statistics. That was about 152 million views, and we passed 50 videos with more than a million views each. So amazing to see which videos you guys like and get traction, and the ones that we just tell because we think they deserve to be immortalized here and available for, forever. We peaked at 990,000 views in a single day, and we got to watch just you know the different trends and things like that. YouTube gives us a lot of great analytics to see what you like and what you don't, and we try to be as responsive as we possibly can be to that and give you exactly what you're looking for when you tune into VinWiki each day at 10 a.m. Eastern. Obviously, a big goal of the YouTube channel is to grow our app audience, and last year we went from 129,000 registered VinWiki app users to over 270,000. We got to give away my Porsche 993 to one of our VinWiki users, Catharsis, once we hit a million subscribers, and he is loving the car, already put a couple thousand more miles on it. So that's great to see, and I'm excited to see what continues to happen to that. You can be sure to follow along on our app to see where it goes. We learned a lot in 2019. We saw that the Brazilian Carrera GT that had been seized due to illegal importation, once we released our video, it immediately triggered another auction. Obviously, they got a lot of inquiries about how someone might be able to buy that. And again, the person they were taken away from, who was, I guess, accused of money laundering in Brazil, had to file an injunction and got the auction stopped. So they're still in Cuiaba, and I, I don't know how long they're going to stay there, but no one has been able to buy and rescue that car and the other cars that were with it. We've had a lot of requests for an update on Rob's Methbus Mini Truck. He mentioned in his AMA, but some of you might have missed, that he actually ended up giving that to one of his radio co-hosts on the Hot Rods and Happy Hour radio show. He and his kid were looking for a project. They loved mini trucks, and they were kind of the perfect guys to come through, finish that project, and build it into something great again. So I think its former owner is still incarcerated, so he may not be able to appreciate the finished product there, but I'm excited to see where they get it, and hopefully we'll be able to get them back to explain their path and their story with the Methbus Mini Truck. Of course, one of our favorite parts of the VinWiki app and the content that users post to it each day is to see what happens to your cars after you sell them. And this year, I learned that my first LP640, it was an orange 08 LP640 Roadster, was unfortunately totaled in Nebraska. So that one is no more, but the JR Garage guys commented that apparently they're going to be bidding on it. So it may be rebuilt. It was kind of a rear quarter damage, and I think it can be rebuilt. Nothing too massive, but the cars are all made of carbon fiber, so they are fairly easy to total. Also, I learned that the third LP640 I own, the green manual LP640 that uh, Curated had for a time, actually ended up being sold again. It popped up with an asking price of $699,000 and sold almost immediately. And so it's actually gone back through Curated and they've got a buyer lined up for it. So, I mean, it's utterly crazy to see the numbers. Of course, that was a really profitable car flip for me, but I still sold it for about half that. So glad to see the whole market going up. I guess that means the Verde Draco car is now worth a bit more, but congratulations to its new owner. I hope they enjoy it just as much as I did. Of course, one of everyone's favorite features on the VinWiki app is the development and the building of lists of cars. And two lists that I love are the US Manual LP640s and the US LP670-4 Super Veloces, the SV Mercies. And users found new ones of each this year. It had been over a year since I'd found a new Manual LP640 or a new SV. And so that took the totals up to 28 Manual LP640s and 42 SVs. Everyone's been asking about Emil's reunion with his dad's old Toyota 2000 GT, the owner that has seven of them. But they've been going back and forth, and apparently they've got something set up for the next couple of months. So hopefully we'll get Emil back in here, and he can tell us all what it was like to finally get to drive the car he grew up loving alongside his father. Doug Tabbitt was able to sell Cars for Stars for about $4,000, so a great profit for him, and it did not go to the owner of carsforstars.co.uk, and so I'm sure there will be a very interesting and hopefully very shrewd negotiation from the new buyer to finally sell it to them for a nice little profit. 
This year we had our first double million view story. Obviously we've had a couple of stories get two, three million views themselves, but I retold the Lamborghini prostitute story and now both of them have a million views or more. So that's amazing. I, I, I never expected that story to be so, I guess, widely enjoyed, but I certainly do enjoy telling it. I've told it many times in other venues and uh, there's a lot of requests for Kimmy to come on and tell her side of it. Unfortunately, she is still indisposed, but hey, maybe anything could happen. Maybe one day we can figure out a way to manage that. We also learned in 2019 that the Flood Veyron that me and Freddie wanted to buy and rebuild has made its way to Dubai. So I don't know in what current state of repair it is in, but it has left the country and it is now in Dubai. You've seen me and Jonathan each tell the story of the stolen Huracan that we recovered a couple of July 4ths ago. In fact, the R8 never got recovered, but they had a third car stolen that you might have seen shared around the internet. Rob Freddy made a video about it, but they had a Verde Picus 2008, kind of a palish yellow green Gallardo Spider that was also stolen. They'd offered like a $4,000 reward, and that one was not recovered until about a year later. And three days before the car could have been like legally forfeited and auctioned off by the impound lot that had it, it was discovered with a matte gray wrap and a VIN swapped, and it was in fact the car. So the owner in Utah has gotten that car back. It's now being fixed. It needed a new clutch and some other things, but he was a very narrow missed losing the car forever and obviously as we talked about it was not sufficiently insured for him to be reimbursed through insurance there so fortunately it is back I have tried to buy it unsuccessfully so far but you never know it would be a great deal and certainly a car with a great story but glad to see it being returned it was not far from here in Fulton County Atlanta Georgia and it's set there for like I said just under a year but it's uh, it's now home and we'll see what happens with it from there Last year, I noticed that 10,000 of you had subscribed to my personal channel. I didn't really have a content strategy or any goals to really build that up, but I saw some requests for more kind of behind the scenes content. We did a tour of the VinWiki set here, a tour of my home garage, and a few other things. Me and Doug made some Hot Wheels videos even just to experiment with what you guys might like. So I, I put a few videos out there. I'm gonna maybe try to do some more this year. It, it certainly won't be a daily thing or maybe even a weekly thing, but it's uh, it's so cool to see so many of the VinWiki storytellers launching their own channel. Channels. We've seen Casey Putsch kind of grow his channel and talk more about Genius Garage there. Obviously, Rob Pitts has kicked off his own channel and Rob's used cars and all the stuff that he's doing. He came back recently to record some more stories, so obviously we had one yesterday. We'll have more coming up very, very soon. We've seen John Tamarian from Curated start to put out some great content. Mike Costigan, who told a few stories here, has his channel, Drive Show, growing. And it's great to see so many of those channels kind of being launched from the reception that you guys have had to their stories here. I mean, we always want to be a hub. This year we were visited by some of the most amazing automotive YouTubers from Rob Ferretti, obviously Tavares, David Patterson, that dude in blue, the guys from Daily Driven Exotics, Shmi, Seen Through Glass, Steve's POV, Adam LZ, and others. And it's such an honor to have those amazing personalities and to have all of their amazing stories just come and be shared from this very chair. So we're very grateful. Many of them will be back this year. Hopefully some more new ones will come by as well. We always love to welcome them and kind of let you know where other great automotive content exists all around YouTube and the rest of the internet. For most of 2019, our highest viewed video was the original top 10 valet fails. Obviously, Alex has come back to tell some more of his amazing valet stories, and fortunately, he's still in business despite some pretty real fails, but uh, eventually, I think last year, the two stolen Lambo story passed, and I think right now, it's our highest viewed video with about 3.3 million views, but the Veyron that was part of the valet fails stories, the first ones, that the owner curbed the wheel really badly after refusing to let one of Alex's valets park the car for him. That car has been sold several times. It was in fact the only Veyron I ever got the chance to buy when it was owned by a friend of mine that's in Nashville. But last year, one of our VinWiki users discovered that it is now at a museum in Australia. Obviously, Bugattis are all world cars. They can kind of go anywhere and Bugatti will either make them come into conformance or whatever they need to do in order for you to be able to move them and register them pretty much freely around the world. And that one is now owned by someone in Australia and currently on display in a museum there. So it's always such a small world as we're able to track the VINs and see where they end up. In 2019, we got to follow the story of the Lycan Hypersport from Fast and Furious Live, from Sam Hard to me here, on to Casey Putsch and Genius Garage. This year in 2020, we're gonna be able to see that full build on the Casey Putsch channel, and he'll come back here to give us updates throughout the year, so I can't wait to see where that comes. We also found the Ford Mondeo that Datto and Dustin from Mischief 
had driven on a cannonball run event in Europe and managed to pretty heavily destroy. It was repaired and when the story aired that day, there was a live eBay auction and one of the users found the car. Dustin came on and told that whole story and they were able to register it in Canada. He's brought it into the US for shows. He's got some more awesome plans with it and I'm sure he'll be back to tell more amazing Mischief Mondeo stories. The way I found the Lycan with Sam Hard was my inquiry about his Murcielago powertrain and I just sold that to Freddy Tavarish because he found the perfect vehicle for it to go in so you'll be sure to check that out on his channel and see what he ends up doing with the uh, Fast and Furious V12 Lamborghini motor and transmission that will end up in something very very fitting very very soon. Last month in December of 2019 we learned something that uh, you know, hit me a little closer to home than I'd expected, but uh, we learned that 2850 is not unbeatable as the fastest time across the country. Arnie and Doug are now the record holders from New York to Los Angeles, the Cannonball Run. Honestly, I couldn't be any happier for them. I've had some requests to talk about, you know, my personal feelings a little bit deeper on it. I may do that on my personal channel at some time over the next couple of months, but honestly, I spent the weekend with both of them and it's just, it's so cool to be able to see you know, just what they're doing with their new platform of influence, you know, over the cannonballing community and everything else that we've been able to do. So that's about it. Again, 2019 was an amazing year. Thank you all so much for watching the videos and coming along with us on this amazing journey. Honestly, it's all been such a <laughs> series of happy accidents. I have no idea where we're going to go from here or what's going to be next, but we're going to keep hopefully telling good stories, something that you guys enjoy. I still don't have a 4 GT allocation, so that doesn't appear to be part of the, the year roadmap, but regardless, I've got an, another few cars that I'm trying to buy right now. We'll see if those deals come together and some other kind of collaborative projects with Freddie and Hoovy and all these other fun guys that we love. So thank you again for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. We don't ask you to do that often, but thanks for everything, and we got a lot more fun stuff to come in 2020. Shrewd negotiation starts with finding the right car, and the best way to do that is with Autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to search nationally through all the major listing sites with one search. Autotempest, all the cars, one search.